Good afternoon and welcome to another amazing episode of P-Zone with Peace Ambassadors on your favorite channel, Captain TV Abuja. And as I always ask you, how are you doing today? I know there has been cold and rain. I believe it's a rain of blessing. I hope you're becoming peaceful with yourself, others and your environment. I hope you're ensuring justice, security and development in your spaces. I'm Moses Abolade your peace building facilitator and host notably peace zone just like i've been saying we need partners like you to come and uh, support this program and that we will be able to sustain it and possibly reach wider audience and with the number showing on the screen you can reach out to us and from there we will do justice to that and today we have been treating some things um for like four four to or three to four times uh, weeks now we have been treating the situation of conflict or the conflict situation in northern nigeria and that has been um kind of expository for us because uh we've been able to uh, we've dive into southern kaduna we've looked at taraba we've looked at uh play two state and today we are right in the middle of benue state benue state is that place where we are known for uh, which is the food basket of the nation and joining me will be uh, Mr. Nathaniel Imsen Awopila uh, but right before I get him on board with me I will be joining virtually before then uh, I will just want you to relax and when we go on the short break when we come back we'll be doing justice to the topic which is Benue State and uh, we'll be looking straight into farmer header clashes please stay glued you're welcome back from that short break where we're discussing um, different cases around northern Nigeria. And today, as I said, we'll be dealing with Benway State. By the way, I'm very used to Benway State. I love having there and um, I know a lot of things going on there. And today joining me is um, a current, the pre current president of Society for Peace Studies and so Practice, SPSP, uh, who is a senior executive bu peace building practitioner with over two, 20 years of experience in peace building program management and practices. He is affiliated with different peace building organizations in Nigeria and across the globe. And he's a, a mentor to not hundreds of peace bu builders across the globe. And uh, I'm also proud to say I'm, I'm also a mentor. Uh, Mr. Natani Ayuda, I think there's something wrong with the the network but i just hope that he joins in again are you there mr nathaniel can you hear me oh seems we've lost him but i think we can we can continue with other things um but while we are waiting for him to possibly call back we hope that uh, we get through to him uh, we're, we're looking at what has happened recently because in uh, Benway State there has been um, recent uh, concerns as regards uh, issues of conflict, uh, especially when it comes to farmer aiders clashes. Uh, Mr. Nathaniel, can you hear me? I can hear you very well. Oh, thank you very much. We lost you at a point. So you're welcome back. Thank you. Uh, how, is, how is Benway State right now? Let's start from that. Well, Benue is reasonably peaceful compared okay. to those days when um, the level of attacks and killings were more frequent and the state was uh, obviously helpless in the face of Where will I uh, seedless attacks. Okay. It's good to know that that Benue State is relatively peaceful compared to what it has been in the past. But I'll give you a brief background on this. Uh, Benue State is one of the core states holding the supply of food production in Nigeria, just like I said, uh, and blessed with natural and mineral resources, just like other places too. Uh, we also know that this this invariably hurt to the economic sector. However, the state has been drained from government killings to farmer ideas clashes which is the main focus of this discussion and there has been a lot of discussion around it uh, this has posed an in adverse effect on the state and its agri agricultural sector while farmers 
are usually left with a raised farm or most likely they don't know what to do uh, so in march 2023 uh, a report by daily trust reveals that a total number of um, 5,000, more than 5,000 persons have been killed in 87 months uh, due to harmed and few months uh, between those few months. Uh, this is devastating, as you know, and we would like you to just start from the beginning. What is the background of the entire scenario of this conflict so that viewers at home can have an understanding of where all this began? Thank you very much, Moses. Uh, the story of the farmer had a crisis. I choose to call it crisis rather than conflict, as people, some people call it, and ra uh, rather than as clashes, which uh, gives the impression of two equal opponents uh, uh, um, exercising aggression against one another. I call it crisis because indeed it's a crisis, mm. uh, but. Whether it's a conflict is another question entirely because uh, you don't describe a situation as conflict mm. when people who were not out to fight mm. found themselves murdered, battered, displaced, and sent away from their original habitations for a protracted period of time. Uh, but the situation didn't start today. Okay. I remember clearly that 2010 to 20, 2011 hmm. was the period when the farmer header issue became obvious. Hmm. It became obvious because around that time you had armed headsmen's attacks as alleged, okay. because that is the name that it's always been called, it's become a popular description. You had attacks and killings, merciless killings and displacement mm. of people around the Gwere West axis of Benue State. Yeah. Gwere West is a border local government. Okay. And the locations that were attacked were locations by the river banks. Mm. Eventually, we, 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 we had the cases in Agatu, which was popular. It gained uh, famous, it gained international reputation. Mm. Gradually over the years, it went to Guma, which again, you know, became the hub in the last, in the recent years. Okay. But all the, most of the local governments that are by the banks of River Benue, hmm. and the few that are in the hinterland have been attacked, and we okay. understand why. These are communities by the riverside, the cattle would come in, graze, enter farmlands, destroy them, enter homelands. Mm. And the aggressive attackers would rise against anybody who dared to stop them and would kill them. Mm. Some in cold blood. Mm. Women killed. Why pregnant? Killed. And so on. So it's a story that is more than 10 years old. Mm. Some of the highlights of this case, after, after it became... Um, uh, public knowledge by 2011 that it was a growing crisis. It continued almost unabated because there were no conflict preventive measures in place. There were no systems for managing conflict, effective systems for managing crisis. Mm. The strength of the traditional institutions that also have a legal mandate for resolving conflict got weakened because at some point leaders, traditional leaders were accused of colluding with the attackers, hmm. uh, taking monies from them and allocating lands to them for grazing and pasture. Hmm. And so that institution that could have addressed the situation at the grassroots became weakened <coughs> and lost the trust of many people and young people in some communities rose against traditional leaders. Uh, who eventually also lost credibility in the face of many. Mm. And in the absence of a peace building agency in the state mm. and low capacity for prevention, minimal capacity for effective and sustained conflict resolution, mm. and the absence of effective um, related agencies that would address the situation, it got to a crisis point. Mm. 
some some people have have published that Benue State lost hundreds of thousands of lives, but the agency in charge of emergency management mm. announced figures that are several times more than that. Hmm. Uh, it's a it's a conflict that has affected Benue State to such a degree that out of the 23 local governments in Benue State, perhaps none has been spared. Okay. Or if we measure level of impact, you would say that at least 21 local governments have been significantly affected. Hmm. That's really this serious. is because, as you said, Benue State is highly fertile hmm. and is known to have pasture that is perhaps unequaled in most parts of Nigeria. Hmm. That is the situation as it is at this point. Wow, uh, that, that's a that's a great trajectory, and um, you've even answered some of my pre premeditated questions. Um, and um, that also shows that there is more to be done. Uh, so I, I will also want us to go into the stakeholders' analysis of um, those who have been involved, uh, looking at the victims right now, looking at also perpetrators of this violence, and also paying attention to. Um, um, the authorities, regulatory bodies, or people who have acted as voices against these heinous um, crimes in, in in your contest, just like you you did that contest or concept clarification. So I would like you to help us identify those those who are in these different categories. Uh, thank you very much. Some of them are very well known. So mm. generally, when you call. Uh, describe the situation, you have two that come out very clearly. You have mm. farmers and you have those described as herders. Mm. Uh, but you, you, they are not the only actors. Mm. And as a matter of fact, Benue State comprises almost 70 to 75 or more uh, citizens that are engaged in agricultural activities. Mm. Um, uh, but then apart from these, you had government uh, as, a, as a stakeholder too, and a party. Government especially, the state government especially became a conflict party uh, when in trying to address the situation, the state enacted a law prohibiting open grazing. Hmm. The Open Grazing Prohibition and Ranches Establishment Law of 2017. Uh, government initiated responding to the uh, call of citizens to have a law that would address the situation, hmm. pass the law. Now, due credit must be given to the young people of Benue State, okay. who rose in their numbers, organized themselves, and formed what was popularly called the MAFO, MAFO standing for Movement Against Fulani Occupation. Hmm. One okay. of the outcomes of their uh, uh, advocacy and activism mm. was mm -hmm. the drafting of bits of bills, one, two, three of them, that were eventually packaged together mm. for presentation to the State House of Assembly. It was at that time that the government recognized the need for that law, and the Governor Samuel Otom led administration took it up, made it a government bill, mm. and it was very speedily passed. Mm. Uh, the law provoked a, a you know, negative reaction from the headsmen, not just the headsmen, or okay. precisely not the headsmen, but the Mieti Alakato Breeders Association and the related agencies that oversee uh, issues touching on headers in the country. Hmm. And so there was promise of aggression, which we also saw come to pass in the past, in the following months and years. What was the uh, aggression? All the actors so, were traditional okay. institutions that should have addressed the situation, but got weakened because of their compromised or perceived compromised positions. Hmm. We also had um, other groups. So eventually, we now had uh, militia groups okay. that sprang up across the state, and in the attempt to try to address the situation aggravated it by making, you know, the level of violence more prevalent. Hmm. We had uh, other government agencies trying to respond to the crisis, such as the SEMA, uh, okay. which did well in responding to the impact, but less in preventing or, won't, you know, uh, ensuring that people moved very speedily away from the compromised locations 
where people were being killed very, very much. Hmm. Civil society was among the actors in the sense of their, you know, activities, including in attempts to intervene and to try to, you know, address the situation in pockets of locations hmm. uh, to, to do that. Uh, so you, you can, the, the list can continue, it can be much longer than that. But these were the very obvious ones. Now, beyond these were security agencies. Hmm. Security agencies have always been the immediate thing you see government do when there's crisis. Okay. But you know what the military do, you know what security agencies do when they come into a situation. Hmm. They may try to make sure there is perceived peace, so no aggression. But mm. then communities tend to suffer other impacts of their presence. And okay. so we had a number of people complaining across the state uh, that um, their rights were trampled upon. At the least provocation, we ha you had the houses and people attacked okay. by the military or alleged to be mi members of the military and so on. So, you know, you can continue uh, uh, beyond that to when you're listing them. Yes, thank you so much. I, I really wish we have more uh, time. Maybe, Moses, maybe I shouldn't end without saying, you know, because okay. in doing conflict analysis, you, you talk of, you know, people that may be actual or perceived uh, stakeholders. So yes, at that's some what point, the federal government was all tre also treated okay. by the government and people of Benin State as a shadow party. Okay. Because a lot of people at the time felt that the government, the federal government was playing roles that helped to aggravate the situation. Hmm. And uh, to some extent, the federal government was seen as a major stakeholder in that regard. Wow, that, that, that's also another angle that uh, I think uh, is very, very, very sensitive. And um, I would just say uh, possibly maybe one last question because of the time. And I know that uh, you've been here before and I believe that you'll be here again uh, for another discussion like this. And we hope that um, something of this nature, uh, we pray that uh, conflict situations like this get resolved finally and they don't reoccur. So I would just like your uh, recommendations to different parties involved um, in the conflict, especially victims so far and uh, other people who have been affected in one way or the other. I just want your recommendation in like one minute or two. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. Thank you, uh, Moses. Um, a lot has happened between the time the crisis started and today. Between 2018 and 2020, we had a number of in interventions from international actors, but the most outstanding of them was that by the United Nations through their various agencies. But the UNDP helped the states to, to, uh, to draft a bill which was passed into law, signed into law by the government, the uh, governor, by His Excellency Governor uh, Tom on the 21st of September 2022. Mm. that provided for establishment of a peace commission in the state. Okay. Now, this is June 23, 2023, mm. and the commission is yet to be activated. Mm. It's a situation that needs to be addressed. So my one... Your account is low. Oh, yes. Just... Please recharge as soon as possible. Okay. Or dial star 500... Oh, sorry about that. I, I, I think we just have to... We lost him at the point. But I want to say special thanks to our guest, Mr. Nathaniel himself, uh, Awopila, who joined via a call, phone call, though. And uh, he's also talking about uh, the Peace Commission, how they will be activated. And I know that we'll still bring him back, hopefully, one of these uh, other episodes to, to finalize some things he have to say. Uh, to viewers at home, I want to say thank you for joining in for this particular edition. And I want to say uh, your support. And what you're doing is really making a great impact. And just like I shared while we started, please do well to sponsor and partner with us on this show. My deepest appreciation goes to um, Captain TV Management Team, Abuja and Management Team of PepNet and the Peace uh, Zone Crew for doing a wonderful job to make this uh, a success. And to everybody doing wonderful work in different spaces i want to say you're doing a very good job keep doing it and together we'll make a solid impact join me again or join us again next next time on this particular uh, another episode of episode while we discuss similar issues please before then please stay peaceful stay safe stay developed and i'm sure that we will all build a peaceful world together bye for now